Hey everybody, Anthony from Ace Wood Co. with my dog Sawyer here and today I'm going to show you how I built this live edge coffee table. It was two beautiful slabs. The ash has beautiful grain to it. Hit that like and subscribe button and enjoy. So to start up this project, the first thing I had to do was flatten this slab. I found the highest point on the slabs, marked them out, and set up my router sled and fence to get it all leveled and accurate. Now I know there's many different ways, but I ended up using 3 quarter inch MDF, and my tabletop was actually quite flat, so this worked out perfectly to run this router. Now I ended up doing shallow passes with my router sled, so it took me about three times to get it nice and flat. Now that I was satisfied with this slab, I ended up flipping it over and doing the other side. Now my router bit can only go so deep, so what I ended up doing is adding pieces of half inch trim underneath the slab. This gave me more wiggle room for my router bit and helped me router the slab more safely. With the slab flipped over, I'm able to router to the desired depth that I want, or rather, thickness of the slab that I want it to be. Flattening a slab isn't too bad, but it just takes time and patience. In the end, it's going to look so good. With the slab flattened, I cut off the ends and marked out the legs. We had two slabs, so I ended up getting a leg from each part of the slab. If you have a corded saw, it'd be a great tool to use, as cutting through thick slabs take a lot of energy and will burn out batteries super fast. I know from experience. We wanted the legs thinner than the coffee table top, so we ended up using the sled one more time to bring it down to thickness. For the bottom shelf, I ended up cutting the slab in half and ripping it down. So we used a jig to rip down the live edge. This gave a nice clean edge, and then I was able to run it through the planer. With the thickness planer, I'm able to bring it down to the thickness that I want, and this piece will be the thinnest between the legs and the top of the coffee table. It only took a little bit of time to getting it to the right size, just a couple of passes. And I just had to fine tune the edge before gluing up. With my little mortising jig, I made my marks and went to work. I'll leave a link in the cards above if you guys want to make a jig like this. It's been super handy and basically a staple in my shop. That is until I get a festival domino one day. A guy can dream, hey? A silicone basting brush is pretty handy in the shop for spreading glue. I mean, I still use the good old finger trick, but I picked up this silicone basting brush from the dollar store and it's been holding up just fine. We didn't want any bark on this project, so I ended up using a chisel and scraped out as much as I can, and then finished that off with a sander to get it smooth. It's time to go through the grits for sanding. As many of you know, it's always good to use pencil marks as guides so you know where you're sanding and know that you're taking just enough off on each pass. I ended up working from 80 grit all the way up to 150 grit.
I start to clean all the knots and voids and prep it up for epoxy. I ended up using black epoxy to fill all these voids and it worked out quite well. I know there's many different types and brands of epoxy, but take your time mixing up the epoxy. Just slowly turn the epoxy and you'll probably create less bubbles. I had a 24 hour cure time for my epoxy, so I let it sit and waited until it was ready to sand. I water popped all my pieces to raise the grain one last time before doing my final sanding. It's nice getting to the last grits of sanding. You can really feel and tell when it's ready for finish when it's so smooth. So just take your time and enjoy the ride. Now it's time to mark the bottom shelf. I wanted it two inches above the ground. So I marked it out and marked it out with my level. I also dry fitted it to see what it looks like with the legs. And then I marked where I wanted the dominoes to go. For the bottom shelf, I just use my mortising jig to set the mortises. And for the legs, I ended up clamping down a fence so my router would be able to slide on that. And I just took my time to make small passes. the exciting part of gluing it up. I didn't get too much footage of this, but this is how I did it. We all know that gluing up can be a stressful time, but yeah, I glued up both legs and got it assembled. I ended up taping just the top section because the bottom section I was able to get easily with the chisel. I drilled some holes for some inset feet. This made it adjustable so that we can make things as flat as we can, but sometimes you need some adjustable legs just to get it perfect. good logo burned in to finish it off. Now my favorite part is applying finish. I'm using Osmo's Wood Wax Finish Extra Thin. I do one coat of this product and then I do two coats of Poly-X Satin. I know it may seem like a lot of coats but but I want to make sure the finish lasts a long time. I find that the extra thin Osmo soaks into the wood really really well and then the Poly-X gives it that nice hardened feel with the satin look just to give it that extra little bit of shine. Now to assemble the coffee table top to the legs I ended up using heavy duty figure eight fasteners with inch and a quarter number six screws. This will help with the wood movement of the coffee table top slab. And you'll hardly see these fasteners too, which is nice.
And there you have it, an Ash Live Edge coffee table. These were two beautiful slabs, has beautiful grain to it with a touch of curls. I'm super happy on how this coffee table turned out and it's going to a beautiful cabin. The clients are happy and, and that's what we always want to strive for. And if you like this build, please hit that like and subscribe button. We really appreciate it over here at Ace Wood Co. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.